The glorious empty bowl of blue that had been the morning sky now featured stacks of boiling, cumulus clouds all gone to darkening grays and blacks. Billowing towers of purple clouds loomed on the western horizon, swiftly turning the colors of an ugly bruise. In the last hour, clouds of spume came scudding across his bow and through the rigging of the stormy petrel. Above the howl of the elements was the high, keening whistle of wind in the sloop's rigging. Salt spray stung Nick's eyes, but he could still see the sky overhead boiling and black. Nick leaned hard into the petrel's tiller, putting the weight of his lean body against it, fighting to keep his bow to windward of Gravestone Rock. He had both hands on the tiller, and they'd gone clammy and cold. Looking up in awe at the giant rock now looming before him, he wiped first one hand, then the other on his soaking trousers. The gravestone. A terrible thought shuddered unpleasantly through Nick's mind. Would that famous stone tower today mark still another watery grave? His own and his beloved Gyps? He cursed himself for his stupidity and leaned into his tiller with all his might. Hopeless. The bow refused to answer the helm to come up into the wind. However could he keep his small sloop to the safe windward side of the massive stone, looming ever larger before him? And to the leeward side lay the seven devils. On a calm day, Nick might pick his way through these treacherous reefs. But now, in a blow, they were deadly. He was fresh out of options. And you call yourself a sailor, Nick MacGyver? He cried aloud. But not even his dog heard his bitter cry of frustration above the roar of wind and water. He should have known better. It was a terrible price to pay for carelessness at sea, especially when you were anywhere near the gravestone. It was a towering monument of glistening black granite that now rose before him, thrusting from the sea like some angry tombstone. It had claimed the lives of skippers and sailors a good deal saltier than Nick and Jip. As Nick had known from earliest childhood, countless ships and men had gone to the bottom courtesy of the gravestone rock, or the seven deadly spines of rock, spreading like tentacles in all directions from its base. The seven devils, the reefs were called, and not for nothing either. Here was as fiendish a bit of coastline as ever there was. This perilous coast had finally led to the building of Nick's home. Even now, the great graybeard light sent yellow stabs streaking overhead through the darkening sky. This flashing tower atop the cliffs off his port bow held special meaning for Nick MacGyver. It was both a warning to stay away and a summons to come home. For Nick lived atop that lighthouse. He was a lighthouse keeper's son. And now it looked as if the famous rock below it might claim the boy if the boy didn't think of something and quickly. If the gravestone doesn't get you, the seven devils will, read the legend carved into the mantle at the Greybeard Inn, and the long-dead British tar who had carved it there knew well whereof he spoke. At that moment, Nick wished he himself had carved those ancient words of warning into the pitching deck he now stood upon. We're not going to make it, boy, shouted an anguished Nick. I can't keep her pointed high enough. Indeed, he could not steer nor will the bow of his small boat to windward of the ever-larger gravestone. For every foot of forward motion Petrel gained, she was losing two feet to side-slipping. Adrenaline poured into Nick's veins as he realized the potential for total disaster in what he was about to do. A whispered prayer to his long-dead hero escaped his lips. Nelson the Strong, Nelson the Brave, Nelson the Lord of the Sea. Nick faced a terrible decision. The most brutal maneuver any sailor could make in such a dreadful blow was a jibe. Jibing meant turning the boat away from the wind instead of into it, so that its brutal force passed directly behind the mainsail. The huge mainsail and heavy boom would then come whipping across the cockpit with a violence that could easily rip the mast from the boat. But what choice did he have? The terrible decision was already made. 